So, um, in terms of uh, what I want to talk to you about, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background. So, the Network Center was founded in uh, 2006. It's based in the Rockies Technology. It was seed funded to the United Philanthropies. Um, and it focuses on the kind of psychosocial aspects of aging. Um, it then founded the style which I head up, and that was founded in uh, seed funded to Enterprise Ireland in 2009. And our focus is very much on aging and technology and what can we do there. So together, our opportunity to send is we very much collaborate with government agencies, academic institutes, and, and particularly industry uh, to develop new ideas that enhance the quality of life and well-being of older people. Um, and those who care for them particularly as well. Uh, so more uh, community-oriented services to sustainable home and, and design, and community design, and then more effectively training technologies. So in short, we can refer to this enhancing longer living and smarter places. Um, in terms of the team in there, we have uh, about say, 25 people, but we're mostly from entrepreneurial backgrounds. We are uh, not an academic centre, we very much deliver services on the ground. So we currently run, uh, as part of the Carpenter County Council Initiative, and the other elements are up there in Carpenter Dow. We run a number of different men's sheds. We run a, a, a good morning now service, which is a friendly call service for other people on a regular basis. We run a service called Kuntaka. Which is the service at the Asian place places as well. It has something like 70 volunteers and we deal with 600 uh, different uh, uh, old people on the ground on that type of basis. So we founded a name friendly technology lab. And what that basically means is, as a living lab, this uh, building that you see up here is actually Great Northern Haven. Great Northern Haven is quite unique on a global basis. There are not so many Great Northern Havens. This is purpose built and opened in 2010 before everything had moved. Uh, it has, it, 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 so it has a huge amount of sensors and technology. It's actually a purpose-built uh, residential uh, unit for older people. Well, they're independent units, and they live there on their, on their own, uh, with support to different um, um, people from different parts of the community. But that's also in collaboration, which is quite different, with the local health authorities, the HSC, and other services on the ground within the North and in the region. And together, we kind of work out, you know, what are the things that you can develop over periods of time. And uh, as you'll see, as I talked about in a few moments, some of the technologies, these are some of the residents. You know, they use iPads, they use smart TVs, and all these other elements in terms of technology. So, but when I'm talking about technology, I'm, I'm trying to I'm bring up this, uh, I call this the case of technology change in terms of uh, the slide here. So, a little bit of audience participation is going to go on very now. So, I'm going to ask everybody to put up their hand with an iPhone. I'm going to ask everybody to put up their hand with an Android phone. I'm going to ask everybody who has an old non smartphone to put up their hand. <laughs> Just to put some context on that, iPhones do not exist in June, until June 2007. Android phones did not exist in October 2008. So in that period of time, huge technology changes happen. There's one person, I think, in the audience that had two. But that is reflected throughout communities and also reflected throughout all the people as well. And you'll see some of that in some of the technology that comes out of that. So the pace of technology change is really faster than most of you would say in the services that are out there. Uh, and I would say to you, in, in this year, you know, Watch out for smart watches, you know. They're going to be the next thing everybody's going to be walking around with in terms of what they have. But when it comes to older people and using technology, but there's huge changes happening there, you know. The, the whole thing of people not using, and older people using, not using technology to get, you know, that's gone. You know, that doesn't exist to a great extent. You know, some of the fastest growths in Facebook and, and, and mobile phones and iPads and tablets actually come to older people themselves and the utilization of technology in there. But it's, for them, it's technology is about you know, perceived usefulness of that piece of technology, perceived easy use, trust, social pressures, and most likely connecting with family and friends and how they do that. And I'm also reminded that of this, uh, this uh, part, 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 cartoon here that you know, recent changes to the telephone analysis have actually changed this picture hugely as well. Most of our time base in terms of older people are actually moving their landlines. They don't have landlines anymore. They're all at mobile phones or some sort. So that's a huge impact in terms of connections. That's a huge impact in terms of some of the technologies that exist in the home that are based on that and, and require that in this actually work. And then when it comes to the whole aspect of caring and home care and looking after people, uh, 
that whether they're older, whether the owner, or whatever they are, in terms of what their care is and the care requirements are there. We, we have significant health situations in terms of care is actually used technology much more than other people. They use it to get support to themselves, they use it to look up the internet, they look at health and all the other aspects. So there are actually higher uses of technology in terms of what actually goes on. So, Great Northern Haven. Great Northern Haven is 16 of these type of apartments. There are 2,500 sensors of different types throughout this complex. We gather 10 million records of data every single month in terms of how old people live uh, and the type of uh, environment in which they live in, in, in their actual homes. We have sensors that determine movement, sensors that determine light, sensors that determine uh, heating and all the other aspects of each terms of that. But these are people's homes at the end of the day. They also have their internet connected TVs, you know, and actually use these. We have the, you know, two of our residents who serenade each other over YouTube over their connected TVs, one from one back and the other. So you know, again, using technology is not the issue in terms of it. Big data. This is the other big thing. So what we have is masses amounts of data. We've been collecting this level of data, 10 million records a month or more since 2010. We have huge data in terms of what actually goes on in people's homes. But what we're interested in that data is, you know, how can I do this with technologies that can actually bring down the price point so that I can take the great Northern Cayman that's never going to be used again and I can retrofit it with every single home in the country. And what price point can I do that? You know, we, we've got it at 1,000 euros, we're getting it below 500 euros at this point in time. And other technologies are going to go there. So it actually becomes an active thing to do with every home. We use simple uh, alarm technologies in the Trubin environments to turn on, you see the top pop up there in the top left and better terms, top left and corner in terms of the screen. This is movement and determinations of people and, and how they live in their home. So you see the periods of time that uh, 12 o'clock midnight is at the top, but midday is at the bottom. So you can see periods of time where they're actually up and moving around and where they are and what times they're in bed with the aspects. And this can feed uh, important information in different services. But what does this reality that mean in reality? So how do we take this big data, which is all on the great the text, the researchers and geeks, um, and how do we turn it into little decisions? How do we turn it into little interventions in terms of somebody's life and the impact on their lives? So we have two top parts again uh, from some of the residents in terms of it. On the, the left-hand side, you see a very active individual that's out of his home quite a lot, sometimes quite late in the evening, and various couple of nights and the other families. There's a way on holidays and all the other aspects. On the right hand side is a person who is not active. The data is telling you it's not active in those information in terms of activity in the home. We know then from ground truths and other information, that person actually suffers quite a lot from depression. So you can see how technologies can start to help that intervention. And that's the point at which we try to make those interventions. How can we then bring in home care support or other support in that person's life to make an impact in terms of what we're seeing from the actual part of the living in the home? I'm going to talk about telehealth and telecare, and it's going to be a video here on this basis. A system to monitor patients remotely is being tested in Dundee. 30 patients with heart conditions or diabetes are involved in the pilot project. It's designed to encourage people to check their health daily, send the information by phone, thereby reducing hospital and GP visits. A group of participants from around the world involved in the project gathered today for the latest update in the scheme. We want to try and find out all we can about diabetes or heart problems and that teaches you to look after yourself and to monitor your blood sugars. It's great for the blood pressure because I have heart failure. And I may have to keep the check that way. I don't have to keep asking doctors for nothing. We won't know what it is or what it is. The difference is it's giving me confidence and it's there. And the data, it's the backup of all the yeah. Behind the that's, that's kind of representative of the type of people that we're working with all the time in terms of health technology. So you can see here the impact it has in their personal lives in terms of technology. And a quick little scenario, imagine it's Friday afternoon, this is a real life story. Friday afternoon, we have an older lady in terms of on, on, on being monitored from, from our home, she's 86 years of age. Just the heart failure, diabetes, and other things. Her blood pressure is actually going to be removed on a Friday afternoon. For her to end up in the hospital care system on a Friday afternoon would be a different uh, process than all the other ends. So, what we were able to do from there 
is that typically three actions they took taking notice that the blood pressure was on uh, the rise, mm -hmm. rise, contact the person themselves with the sweet, check her blood, blood pressure there again, and then he was able to actually escalate that to the clinic nurse specialist in the hospital. The clinic nurse specialist in the hospital then are able to contact the consultant, and the consultant is able to change half a tablet on a Friday afternoon to that individual, which brought down her blood pressure over the next 24 hours. Uh, to significantly and manage her condition directly from our home without too much of a customer to do That's just a simple example. And we've had multiple groups of those in terms of just small trials and trials that have been done and technology implementations. So if I, if I look at the bigger marketplace and, and where does home care and all those elements that need in healthcare and stuff, these things right now are happening. Digital health is becoming absolutely massive in terms of huge investments in other areas. Right? Connected homes has become massive and other You know, there's a company called Nest introduced a smart thermostat. You know, not think you can change thermostats in your home and you have a two smart alarm system. It takes a million invested in it. Google bought it for 3.2 million recently. So the whole aspect of, of connected homes and the other elements in relation to that change. Home care is changing in terms of the, the, the implementations and the number of care and services in healthcare. But home is becoming the center of all the elements. When you look at it, and the aspect of people wanting to live in their own homes. Uh, Tony Brown would have talked earlier in terms of, I've seen this slide before, in terms of and it's this whole aspect of you know, healthcare uh, and, and the other elements, and how am I moving it from acute care to home care? And you really got to ask yourself, you know, is the budget problem in that basis? You know, we want to achieve into the, 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 the quality of life and all the other aspects. We would argue that they're probably not, but we have, you know, there's not some argument that. The HSC is not the centre of the world, but you know, the HSC is not the one who can sponsor for the actual delivery of home, home care, and, and the other elements. And there's a big question to be asked about in terms of time. Um, so, like, we've done OMTI conferences over the different years and years uh, in, in this space and the other things, and there's a common thread that comes out in terms of use of ICT and care and all the different aspects of it. And it's very much this organisational pace of change versus technology pace of change. They do not match. In whatever way you look at it, it's the macro independencies against the simplicity in terms of delivering more people out of service to all people. Money is finite and shrinking, you know, as these things that, you know, all the routes are growing and population relation goes as well. We talk about demographic change, the simple fact is irreversible. It doesn't matter what the figures or the other aspects are, it is growing hugely, the plus the 80s and 85s is growing, and it isn't irreversible, it's not going to change. That's an important part. Telehealth and all the other things in relation to, to digital health have been piloted fatigued. We're fatigued with the number of clients that we've run and all the other aspects and then they You know, there's a value of improvement here in terms of it and the supports and little types of supports that can be able to do home. But when you look at some of the supports that are available for people in the home and social alarms and all that, they're running different departments in different areas. They're not together, they're not combined, they're not working together in terms of how they can have to deliver those services. We've had this slide for 20 years at this point in time, and we look at it very much from the person at the heart of services, and we do this in terms of all that living of services out of the flat. Around that person at the centre then becomes family, community, volunteers, public services, private services, and all the other aspects in terms of, that, of those elements, and where those activities actually go on on the basis. And the big question here in terms of is, you know, home care is one of those there's the only is part of that delivery as our family and community come up with the aspects. The question, question is how can you get those there to be only to be actually working together in terms of technology and services and other things. At the end of the day, you know, the big thing here is that you know the connections this is this is one of our residents again, you know, in terms of it's not just with the technology so having smile and stuff like that because of the site being quite active and all the other elements. But it's their homes, they are real people, they are real lives, and all the other aspects in relation to them. The big question is here is how can we create connections between all different groups that actually support him to be able to live in his own home so that he doesn't end up in residential care. In Great Northern Haven, we've actually taken people out of the residential care back into being able to live in their own homes and work out of that. And we begin to do some of those aspects in terms of the out of being community. Right now, we provide you know, uh, a technology basis in, the, in terms of transitional care. There are a new hospital in Dublin, currently, 
about the transitional care, where they're discharging people from hospitals earlier with home care support, they actually home care provider, and putting them into their homes in earlier stages. Simply because it's, it's a high good benchmark earlier, there are not enough residential care needs in the area, and there's got to be another way, another uh, opportunity in terms of private individual services. And we would argue that you know, technology is a big part of that aspect. So whether it's from active 90 year olds to bedridden adults or children, you know, they all start coming home. You know, they all just go into the middle of the years in the comfort of their own homes. And rather than with them the institution settings. So you know, that's supported by individuals, families, friends, community care, health care, um, as well as even national and local governments. And some of the aspects of what we've been involved in the and capital and mission have shown some of the impact of what you can achieve there. You know, so at the end of the day, it's the lack of connection between us. Technology can support that lack of connection between the other ends. And I believe technology is a platform on which a lot of that will actually be delivered. Uh, but it's actually delivered at the end of the day. So, I think I'm on time, sir. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have uh, Jeffrey Shannon. Jeffrey, again, will be familiar to most of you for really, I think, the counselling role he plays in relation to children and children's rights in Ireland. Uh, he's part of the special rapporteur on protection. Uh, among many other roles that he has. And I think Jeffrey has talked about uh, violence in child law. I'm trying to frame them as how that's relevant to care for children. And Jeffrey has to go to a wedding that he does after this. <laughs> so we're going to let him go after he does um, his talk. Okay. Thanks, Jeffrey.